YouTube, welcome to Be Nature. It's a little bit of a different episode today as uh, me and Becca are hiking Hadrian's Wall. We probably should have started filming yesterday, but this is. Um... Yes, I'm filming you. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> this is the second day, and this is our first morning after our camp, uh, our wild camp. There's Becca's lovely tent. I'll talk about mine in a second. <laughs> So yeah, for this camp, me and Becca spent ages trying to find decent, lightweight tents um, that weren't going to fail, that weren't too expensive to buy to stay in. So I'll show you Becca's first. Okay, so this is Becca's tent. It's uh, the OX Fox One, and um, she's had a lovely night's sleep in her tent. Um, and let's go over to mine. Mine had an issue in the night. Now this is only the second time that I've used this tent, so um, it's not failed from overuse, but basically the uh, pole snapped in the foot end of the, uh, of the tent while I was asleep. That meant that the outer then touched the inner, which got all my stuff wet inside. And we're only on, well, day two, but that was our first night camp out. So that's the Blackthorn one. So thanks Blackthorn one. I won't be buying your products again. So far we've been a little bit rubbish at recording during this trip. So here's a little update of what's happened so far. Day one we arrived in Newcastle and we walked along the river which was quite nice. Um, we made about 10 miles and we did a wild camp in some woodland on a common near where we were near had, heading, on, heading on the wall. Head on the wall. On the wall. Um, so yeah that was a pretty good day uh, but during the night my tent broke. Um, so yeah that that lowered morale slightly. Um, so day two, morale was kind of low. So we don't have any pictures or anything for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, we decided because morale was so low, we booked some accommodation for night three in a hotel. So night two, we walked a little bit further and we found a lovely field to camp in. In fact, it, it was it was really pretty. We sat in a nice grass field watching the swallows. That was lovely. And we got a decent night's sleep on some nice soft grass. Um, but my tent broke even more. <laughs> um, so we did a shorter walk, day three, which was yesterday, and we arrived at the hotel that we booked. Um, so that was nice. We got showered, we got to sort our stuff out because our stuff had got wet, so we've been able to dry stuff out. So yeah, day three, we're just packing up here at the hotel. Um, we are still, we didn't make as good progress as we'd have liked yesterday because we didn't walk very far um, to the hotel we're in now. But we're still on track to be able to make it to Carlisle for Monday. Um, so yeah, everything's good. Um, we're well fed. The George Hotel does a lovely breakfast. Um, highly recommended. And yeah, we're ready to go. Hopefully we'll get some more footage and more photos <laughs> during the next part of the trip. Day three of our walk and we finally found a piece of Hadrian's wall. And just as it was coming to sight, a rainbow appeared. So it's, the rainbow's gone now, you can't see it, but... We saw it, that's the main thing. You'll remember me when the west wind blows among the fields of barley. <laughs>
I think it's a castle yeah. too. Castle. Yeah, the tiny, tiny <laughs> castle. Let's go take a look. Here it is. There's no sign. There's, a... There's definitely a bridge to get out, isn't there? Might be a window. A window? <laughs> Could be right. a really big one. It's supposed to be a castle. If I lived in the castle, I'd want it to be a bit grand. Why would it have a window on the floor? Maybe Why this wasn't the floor, floor then. It would have been lower back in the whatever time it was. Roman era. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, it is a castle. Castle thirty-seven. Yes. Now we know. We could totally be archaeologists. Archaeology with Beck and Ellen. <laughs> So here we are on Adrian's wall again. Again, <laughs> still. <laughs> still. Um, so day four was an absolutely glorious walk. Um, really enjoyed it. We made up for the time that we lost on the shorter stint. Mm. We uh, did quite a few miles mm. on day four. Towards the end of day four, though, um, my Achilles heel started hurting. And the pain got worse and worse and worse and it was kind of unbearable. So we headed down off the hills to um, a pub called Twice Brood. We got in there um, just in time to miss <laughs> a huge torrential pan downpour. <laughs> so we had a pint and I took my boot off to try and work out what was wrong. Um, the pain disappeared without my boots, but as soon as I put my boot back on, it hurt again. Um, so we then managed to, well, I managed to hobble <laughs> to a campsite just down the road. It was a very nice campsite. They served a very good breakfast. Uh, it was a little bit wet in the field though. Uh, we got a bit. little bit muddy. <laughs> So day five, we left the campsite. I was still in quite a lot of pain. I set off wearing my boots up. We had to walk uphill back up onto the top to get back onto the Hadrian Wall path. Uh, when we got onto the top, I was again in agonizing pain. I tried tying my boots in different ways. Becca swapped boots with me to see if that would help. Nothing was working. So I took the decision to walk the rest of the way, well, not the rest of the way, we're not finished yet, not <laughs> the rest of that day. Sure you were thinking about after you've <laughs> yeah. been in your sock for a while. Yeah, <laughs> I walked with one sealskin sock on and one boot. That seemed to do the trick though, and the pain disappeared. Uh, it was interesting walking in a sock, but it was quite enjoyable, it was a really nice day. We stopped for lunch by the side of a quarry and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, because of the pain, we'd booked in to another bed and breakfast for last night. That was on day, that was day five, day six today. Yeah. Yeah, so day five night, we booked into a bed and breakfast called... The Walltown... Walltown Lodge. Lodge. Yes. Um, lovely, lovely couple in that place. <laughs> it was absolutely a beautiful yeah. bed and breakfast. Don't regret booking in there at all. It was worth every penny. Um, breakfast was superb, the room was beautiful um, and the lovely guy gave me a drive down to the garage to find some different shoes. So um, I bought a pair of trainers. Lovely colour. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> let me switch camera angles. For all the new trainers. New shoes! <laughs> um, I've also made a slight alteration here if you can see to the back of it so that it's not pressing anywhere near the 
area. So yeah. Um, oh, also at that bed and breakfast, they gave us a little doggy bag with um, banana bread and like stuffing for lunch. A couple of so. apples and uh, little um, chocolate bars, bananas. Yeah. So nice. So we're feeling good. We're feeling very good. Um, progress yesterday was quite slow. Obviously, I was walking in a sock, but um, we I can easily enjoyed. make that time up. I quite enjoyed walking that slow. Yeah. Watching you hobble along. Thanks. Yeah. So, it was good. It's funny. Every time my morale was going, I'm like, oh, walking. At least quite I'm not slow. Ellen. Look at, look at Ellen and her one sock, one shoe, Ellen. So, yeah. Everything's going good, and we can. We think we can easily make up what we, like, got behind yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Um, not in pain, so feeling good. The packs are starting to feel lighter on our backs, even though they can't be. Well, they can. They be. can They've be. We've eaten some food, yeah. but uh, I think we're just getting used to carrying the weight. Um, but yeah, it's all good. Onwards and upwards. <laughs> getting towards the end of day six um we've had quite a nice day's walk the weather's been good um we stopped in a lovely field and had a cut of a hot drink that was nice and nice to talk to the animals yeah mood and bard they didn't they didn't think that we were cows or sheep it's a little <laughs> bit disappointing um but yeah we are at what time is it it's about seven o'clock um, and we came across this lovely bit of beach woodland which we're going to wild camping tonight. Um, it's a little bit too early still to set up the tents so we're going to wait until it gets a little bit darker and set up the tents. But I'll just give you a little look around where we're going to camp. Today, day seven, was a, an interesting day along the way. Uh, we woke up in our lovely woods that we wild camped in. Um, the wind over that night got so strong, um, I was slightly worried about like branches and things falling on me in my sleep. And then also during the night, I heard movement and I thought it was a deer because that's what my brain does. Like, it's a deer and it's eating it's by the wildlife. It's eating by the tent and it's <laughs> it's all nice and then and then I started to worry and I thought maybe it's a herd of deer and they might trample us. But <laughs> in the morning Becca went to go and have a wild wee and she noticed in my usual spot went over the branch, looked up there's a tent. <laughs> why, why is there a tent? I need a wee. So, so, like, quickly kind of snuck 
back to my tent and then I'm like, there's a tent where I need to pee. <laughs> so yes, during the night somebody came and uh, also wild camp. It's really cool though. In Becca's weeing spot, so if that was you, uh, was yeah. You <laughs> Your tent was on wee. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we left there, it was, uh, it was quite a nice day. We went round the corner and the lovely people at the farm had left out like an honesty box thing, which was nice, and it had got um, like water and pop and sweets and things in, so that was a nice surprise around the corner. I had fruit pastels. I had water, but that was because I had to, because I'd run out of water. <laughs> um, but Becca shared a fruit pastels, which was really nice. I offered her a sip of my water, but... I figured you probably needed your water more than I did, so... Yeah. <laughs> more than a litre left. <laughs> um, so yeah, then what did we do? We walked, obviously we walked, and we walked, walked <laughs> and walked. We stopped at a lovely tea rooms for a delicious jacket potato. Yeah, that was nice. Um, in somewhere called Walton. Reading, the reading room. The reading rooms in Walton, that was really nice. Um, and then we walked some more and then we realised that we were starting to get pretty close to Carlisle so we needed to find somewhere to stay before we reached Carlisle mm. so we started trying to find places but on that stretch of the walk it was really difficult to find Absolutely anywhere nothing. to camp <laughs> there was nowhere to camp we looked for B&B's we looked for hotels we were really really struggling and then we saw a sign for Camping. a campsite <laughs> so it said it was just half a mile up the road away from our like the Hadrian's Wall path our so, lives are saved. Yes. <laughs> Look, camping. Yay. So we followed the sign and uh, we walked and walked and Becca was like, there's no campsite up here. There's definitely no camp." And I was like, we've not gone half a mile yet. Just chill. <laughs> <laughs> so we finally reached another sign that said campsite outside a farm. So we followed the driveway up to the farm. Barking we dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Angry barking dogs yeah the mood suddenly changed the farm looked particularly scary <laughs> it was very dark and unwelcoming with barking dogs there were no signs of anybody camping there no. um we walked up and i pressed the well it was a bit weird there was like two doorbells and two doors for the same house yeah, in this little courtyard yeah so i pressed the doorbell and the second i pressed it i thought i don't want you to answer this because i don't want to stay here <laughs> <laughs> Quick, I think we should go. So, yeah, yeah, nobody answered. That was good. Yeah, we didn't wait very long though, to be fair. No, we were, upstairs, yeah, we kind of like, open I wouldn't door, say no knock a door, door run, because we waited a little bit, <laughs> but then we ran away. <laughs> um, so then, because we'd gone quite, we'd gone quite far away from Hadrian's Wall Path, there was a sign for a pub in the same village where we were looking for the campsite. So we thought we'd walk a little bit further and maybe ask the people in the mm. pub if there was anywhere to stay. So as we were walking through this strange, strange village, we noticed there were no people around. <laughs> the whole place nobody. had a really horrible atmosphere. <laughs> and we got to the pub and the pub was closed and the curtains were drawn. It looked pretty seedy anyway. It was dark and... It was sportsman or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked scary. So, um... I had a look on my phone and I thought I found um, a bed and breakfast quite nearby. It mm. was, I thought it was about uh, two miles away. So we set off down a strange path. <laughs> it was marked on the map as a path and there were, sign there were little arrows on the yeah. gatepost to indicate it was a path, but it was clearly one that hadn't been walked for quite some quite time. Some time. Yeah. So <laughs> with yeah. nettles and <laughs> so yeah, we had to fight through the undergrowth. Um, yeah, I was at this point we were getting pretty tired. We were walking a long time, but I kept saying to myself, "It's okay. We're, we're nearly there. there." So I didn't take. I didn't. We didn't. We didn't stop for a break because we were freaked out by the weird town <laughs> we'd just been in, um, and we just kept on going and going and going. Um, so eventually, after fighting through all the undergrowth and the weird paths, we came to another village where I thought there was a bed and breakfast mm. because their address indicated that they were in that village. <laughs> yeah, Serdington, that's it. Um, so we, we get there and we start walking towards the village centre 
but we weren't really sure where the bed and breakfast is. But luckily, we saw a lady in a garden, a very nice lady, um, doing some gardening. So I asked her where the golden... Was it the golden, golden fleece? fleece yeah. Where's the golden fleece? Mm -hmm. um, so she said we were going the wrong way and directed us up the lane. She said, yeah. walk... All the way up to the end all of the road. The way. To the main road. <laughs> And then left, and it's over the brow of the hill. Just over the brow of the hill, yeah. So we set off up the road, and I think we probably walked a good couple of miles. At least, yeah. At least two miles that road was. <laughs> I kept thinking, we must be coming to the end of this road soon. <laughs> but it never seemed to happen. Um, eventually, after at least two miles, we did come to the main road, and it was a really, really busy main road, and there were no paths on the Lots side. Lots of lorries that went up here quite close to the Yeah, so. so we had to walk down the verge, which was very dodgy. <laughs> um, and just over the brow of the hill, the brow of the hill never seemed to end. No, it didn't. <laughs> we walked for a long time, <laughs> waiting for the brow of the hill, and it didn't seem to come for quite a long time. Um, but eventually, we reached the Golden Fleece. <laughs> we were so happy because uh -huh. our backs were killing us, our feet were killing us, we'd walked further than we wanted to, but we just kept going because we knew we were going to get to the bed and breakfast. So we walked in, four-star place, by the way, and we were disgusting. <laughs> um, so I asked the guy if there were any rooms, and he was like, no, we're fully booked. No room <laughs> So at this point, we're in the middle of nowhere, near a really, really busy main road, and yeah, nowhere to stay. Definitely nowhere to put up a tent. <laughs> so we decided to do the unthinkable. <laughs> we ordered a taxi to Carlisle. But I don't feel like we cheated ourselves, because the distance that we walked, we would only have been probably about four miles away from... Carlisle. Carlisle. Mm -hmm. If we carried on down the Hadrian's Wall path, mm -hmm. so to make up for our rubbishness there, we are today going to go and do a little bit of a walk down the river to make up for the four miles that we missed. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, and then we need to tell you about this hotel we arrived in. <laughs> so we arrived in Carlisle and we booked a cheapish hotel. The room's yeah. all right. Um, but yeah, it was like the weirdest experience ever. <laughs> so we came in and the place was filled with... Um, it's like an Asian tour. Eastern Asian tour company had come with like buses. Two coaches full at least. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so um, yeah, we felt a little bit out of place surrounded by Eastern Asian people. Um <laughs> And all the signs around the hotel were also like written in Chinese. <laughs> signs on the tables, like we were like, what do these signs mean? I don't know, they're written in Chinese. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it was just weird. It's difficult to describe how weird it was. Um, and then we thought there was this, told us about dinner, we were about to go out for dinner. Yeah. And um, we got down there and they said, oh, you can order food from the bar or the restaurant. So I thought, oh, we'll go in the restaurant, it's a bit nice, there's a bit less people in there. But there was absolutely nobody. It was completely deserted. Yeah. <laughs> and then we... It, it was just a room with tables <laughs> and chairs, really. It, <laughs> so we came out, ordered at the bar and sat in the restaurant and, and then pulled out the chair. <laughs> and there was, like, all condiments and sugar just on the chair. <laughs> on the just so happened the one chair that I picked... <laughs> <laughs> it was filled with condiments. It's a good job I didn't sit on them. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're here anyway. Um, we're going to go look around Carlisle, yeah. have a wander down by the river, and probably go look at the castle yeah. to finish off our trip. Yeah.